going to start with a, a verse from Scripture, Matthew 21. This is on Palm Sunday that day, and it says in a very, verse 8, Matthew 21, it says, And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Come on, give him praise in this place. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we gotta dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, praise when it don't make sense. Sometimes we gotta stare down the giant. Worship from the lion's day. That's right. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountain. Louder in the valley. Trusting that he's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the wonder. Wait for the answer. Worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anywhere. Thank you, 
We love you so much, so much, and we do believe there is nothing you cannot do today in this place. As you worship the Lord King, Master of the universe, right now he is seated on the throne of heaven. very present, very present in this place. And there is nothing we can handle with him. Even the greatest mountain, the highest joy, we can handle it with the king. The lowest valley, we can handle it with the king. For he is the master, the savior of the whole world, walking through these aisles in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. God, you are here.
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
for your presence in this place, touching every life, turning every situation around, Lord. We don't even have to see it, Lord. We know it by faith that you're already working miracles in this house this morning. And also through those that are watching on, online, Lord, your miracle working power is at work. Lord, we give you praise and glory and honor in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, it's such a joy to sing about the wonderful God that we serve, amen? Is he your miracle worker this morning? Hallelujah, is he, is he your promise keeper? Let's sing that one more time, Renee. Sunday to give you praise and honor and worship you, Lord. Lord, we refuse to let a rock praise us, praise out, praise us. We're going to give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen, amen. Come on, give him a great shout and say, Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. It's such a joy to know Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Well, thank y'all so much for coming today and being a part of this powerful service. Brother Jesse's in the house. He'll be coming to share just a few moments on the offering. He's also going to give you a report of what happened when we were in Switzerland. God did some great things. I'm going to save that for him. But shake somebody's hand next to you. Give them a hug around the neck. Let them know you're glad you're, they're here in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. changes for the good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody here in the house may be visiting with us for the first time. Can I see the hands of any visitors that are visiting today with us for the very first time? Right here in the middle, sir, would you tell me where you're from? Southern California. Give him a great hand clap. Did I miss anybody else in that? How about on this side? Anybody else brand new visiting with us? If you're watching, did I miss someone? Well, welcome all our family here at Covenant Church, and welcome to all of those that are watching online. Let us know where you're watching from. Some of you may be watching for the very first time. Amen? Love what God is doing at Covenant Church. Hallelujah. I was able to watch for the Sunday service, listen to the Wednesday night service, and see that God takes care of this house even when we're gone. They had a great service. I know Pastor George preached last Sunday the message, and Ron shared, I believe, on the offering. And uh, we had a great time where the teenagers uh, have been opening the service for me. So I feel like the house is in good hands. God always takes care of things when I'm gone. So thank y'all so much for being such a blessing and being so supportive of the whole team. It takes a team, amen, to do what God's called us to do. And, and I have some sad news today, but I'm going to recognize someone who has been part of the team for quite some time now here at the church. She served in many different ways, including a home group leader, as well as interpreting for Spanish translations in the service. Nilan Taylor, would you come to the front so that I can... She's moving to, uh, I think, Colorado. Getting married and moving to Colorado. 
come on up to the top, to the platform for me, if that's okay. And I believe she has her fiance with her today. Hello, hello, hello. So good to meet you, finally. Would you bring the microphone up, please? We're so happy for you in this new stage of this new season of your life but we're gonna miss you so very much. And I, uh, I, this is her last service here, so I wanted to spend time praying with her, and uh, I'd like you to say a few words to the congregation, just for a moment, if that's okay. Maybe introduce your fiance, give us some details. <laughs> okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Nalan Taylor here. This is my fiance, Michael Bateman. Uh, beautiful story, I guess. Uh, you get practice get going here, huh? So we met over 20 plus years ago in Dominican Republic, and um, we were both students studying abroad. And uh, maybe 2020 is when we reconnected again. Somebody sent me a private message. <laughs> and uh, since then, we <laughs> have kind of been speaking off and on. But in 2021, he came to Louisiana to visit, and I still wasn't, you know, my eyes weren't opened. So I was still just thinking, oh, he's just a friend. And then finally, 2023 is when he came back and we had date number one and date number two, I flew to Colorado to go see him and um, we proposed in the summer. So he met my family and asked my dad for my hand in marriage and yada, yada, beautiful story. So I could go on and on, right? But we're both in education. He is a principal of an elementary school in Colorado. I have been in education here in Louisiana for the past 16 years. And then of course, serving here at the church as an interpreter, one of the interpreters for our Spanish speaking ministry, home group for our connect group for the ladies who are 40 plus. <laughs> and um, raise and worship team, you know, for many years and just excited, just excited for this new chapter. and. Very happy to see what God is doing for both of our lives and just a beautiful story that we have together. So Amen. thank you very much. Amen. Praise God. And when's the wedding? April 20th. Wedding is April? April 20th. 20. Mm -hmm. And over there in Colorado? Mm -hmm. So April because both of our birthdays are in April 20 because we knew it in 2020. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> what? Would you, would you like to say something? Please greet me. So she is much more uh, verbose and she's very very good at telling the story. I usually get in trouble because I tell it wrong. <laughs> so I'm glad that you asked her to tell it first. Mm. Um, I am just, I'm just in awe of the Lord. He is so, so, so faithful. Every time when I can't see him, he's working. He was working over 20 years from when we first met <laughs> to now, <laughs> behind the scenes. And it's marvelous. It is a marvelous work. So I'm just in awe, and I thank you for celebrating with us. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. Say He'll be again. ordained to be a pastor this coming Friday in Colorado for his ministry, for church home. Oh, praise mm -hmm. God. Did y'all hear Christian that? Fellowship. Colorado Christian Fellowship. Tell them. So, so I'll, I'll be ordained. I've been in a two-year um, training um, ministry. Um, I'll be ordained as a pastor this coming Good Friday at my church in Colorado Christian Fellowship. Praise the Lord. Well, would you just, would y'all just stretch forth your hand now to them so I can pray for them? Uh, uh, would you come and collect this for me? Thank you so much. Lift your hands to heaven right now. Can I just pray for both of you? Because you're a, you're a unit now. We'll be pretty soon. Father, I thank you for Nilan and all that she's meant to this church all these years. Lord, I thank you that she's been such a blessing. And Lord, we, we send her off with the, our blessing from this church, from heaven, Lord, with this new season of her life. Lord, I ask your blessing no matter everything she sets her hand to do. Lord, I think you've already perfectly prepared her for the next season of her life. Lord, I thank you that she's been so faithful and so joyful, such a joy to be around all these years, such a servant. Lord, I thank you that you see her heart and that you're preparing the way before she goes. Lord, I pray for her husband as well. Lord, touch her today. Your blessing be upon her and upon him as well, Lord, for this next season of their life together, Lord. I thank you for your blessing that makes a way where there seems to be no way, that prepares the way before they even get there, Lord. And I thank you that they're stepping into their divine destiny as a couple in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Oh, Lord, I love you, darling. 
so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. God bless you. Give them a great hand clap as they go to their seats. Hallelujah. What a what's so exciting to see God put lives together this way. Amen. Such a, we'll be looking forward to them visiting with us sometimes, coming for our conferences and things in the future. Amen. Well, we have so many great things happening here at the church. I'd like you to watch the screens, and then after that, Brother Jesse will be here to share on the offering and give you a report for what we did when we were in Switzerland last week. Bye-bye. Hello, Covenant Church. It's a great day to worship God together in unity. Here are some wonderful ways you can grow in faith and believe with us here at Covenant Church. If you're visiting today and haven't filled out a Covenant Church Connect card that's found in the back of your pew, please do so now and place it in the offering when it's received or bring it to the Welcome Center after service. We want to stay connected with you. Get connected with the Covenant Church Home Group. Groups gather tonight from 6 to 7.30 p.m. These classes will take place the fourth Sunday of every month for fellowship, Bible study, and prayer. Visit the Welcome Center for more information. Make plans to join us for our next Covenant Church Soul Winning Outreach on Saturday, April 6th. Our Soul Winning team will meet at 10 a.m. in the Annex before heading out into the community to share the good news of Jesus. To be a part of this outreach, please sign up at the Welcome Center. Join us for our Next Steps class, April 7th, immediately after service in the prayer room. These classes will take place every first Sunday of the month. If you're new to Covenant Church, we encourage you to come and learn about our church history, beliefs, and vision. Ladies of Covenant Church, join us for our Covenant Women's Brunch. This exciting time of fellowship is on Saturday, April 13th at 10 a.m. at Ormond Manor Plantation at the Carriage House, located on River Road in Destrehan, Louisiana. The cost is $30 per person. Please sign up and pay in the Product and Vision Center by Sunday, April 7th. Parents, bring your children to Covenant Kids in the East Wing for exciting age-appropriate Bible lessons with Pastor Melissa and our Covenant Kids leaders. The fun begins every Sunday at 10 a.m. and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. for children three months to fifth grade. It's always fun to worship God together at Covenant Youth. If you're in middle or high school, make plans to join Pastor Saudi and the Covenant Youth Leaders on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Service takes place in the Annex. Join us for our Wednesday night services with Pastor Kathy. Service begins at 7 p.m. in the Sanctuary. Intercessory prayer changes everything. Join the Covenant Church intercessors in the prayer room on Sunday mornings before service at 9 to 9.45 a.m. and on Wednesdays before service at 6.30 p.m. If you haven't already, follow us on our social media platforms to be blessed with daily inspirational content. And check out JDM.org to find out more about the ministry. God bless you. The resurrection is taking place. A dawn is coming. Celebrate the resurrection with praise and worship and a life-changing message from Jesse Duplantis. The only Jesus some people may ever see in you is the Jesus in you or the Jesus in me. So I want my light to shine brightly because the Easter's ever day for me. Join Jesse Duplantis, Resurrection Sunday, March 31st, 10 a.m. at Covenant Church. There's a world that needs to be saved. Our mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus to that world. That is why we here at Jesse the Planet's Ministries believe the unbelievable and operate in the impossible. God is continuing to direct us to expand our outreach to more people in more places and through more ways than ever before. We are advancing into the frontiers of ministry to change more lives through one simple question. Do you know Jesus. Listen to me, it is beginning. The light of Jesus is shining higher and brighter and further than ever. People from all over 
people are responding to the message of Jesus. Nothing can stop the light of God's love from reaching people and changing lives. the Lord a great God bless you praise the Lord God is so good and gracious I was looking all that remember all those places I've been there and that, that's that's just that, that's not AI but they can just put stuff whatever they want that's real that's reality right there God has been so good and gracious we thank you for coming this morning you that are watching all over the world we thank you for tuning in we consider you a part of Covenant Church because you tell us that it is such a blessing of the Lord and part of JDM and God's been so good before we receive our offering, I, I, I want to talk about the trip. We just came back from Switzerland, and I mean, and we had one of the most marvelous times. I think we did a total of seven meetings, maybe eight, seven, seven or eight, and uh, we flew in, and it was just such a blessing of the Lord, and, and uh, we went to a, pl a church called Zoe right there in Zurich, Switzerland, had a marvelous meeting uh, with a, the, the guy that I met. His name is Peter Hasler. And to make a long story short, he was one of my interpreters or translators when I was in uh, Beal, Switzerland last year at the ice hockey arena and, and things of that nature. It was such a blessing of the Lord. And we developed kind of like a little re relationship. And he said, would you come? And I wasn't planning on going back. And the Lord said, you go. And uh, while I was there, I, I mean, during that time, I was asked to preach at the uh, European Faith Conference for ministers there where, where you go up into the mountains. Uh, what's the, how do you say the name of that town? Le Les... Laz, I first said lust. He said, no, 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 that's not it. <laughs> I don't know. It's all German. I should have brought P and Ron with me, man, because I couldn't understand anything, you know. Uh, and th but yet, I, that country is really, truly amazing. It's such, yeah, that's Peter right there. Praise the Lord. Me and Kathy, and uh, we had a marvelous time. And uh, he, I've never been on a gondola. I mean, I don't, I've never water skied. I, I've never snow skied. I've never had time to play. I, I just work. That's what I do, you know, even since a child. And God's been so good and gracious. But anyway, to make a long story short, I went up that gondola, and, it, and you could probably put 50 people in that gondola. That thing was huge, boy. And we're getting higher and higher and higher. It was way up there, you know. And then the panorama. So I was just standing out there, and there people skiing and snowboarding and everybody. And me, I'm just standing on the snow, and I picked up a, 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 a snowball. I made it like a snowball in my hand. And I thought, if I had some strawberry syrup, you'd make me a snow cone you know? Glory to God. It was so beautiful. And uh, they were all talking, and I'm just looking like I'm looking at you. And the Lord said, I did good. Then they just said, I said, oh, Jesus, you shucked the corn here. Let me tell you that, my God. It was just a panoramic view. But what was also was so beautiful was the wonderful people. We met people from so many different nations when we went up and preached um, in, uh, up the mountain. And, uh, I mean, my God, he was just from everywhere. And uh, from from Lebanon, uh, they want me to come to Lebanon and Beirut, Beirut, that's not the thing I was call it. And uh, what else? What's the name of it? London, Lithuania. I mean, I mean, everybody speaking different language. It was like speaking in tongues. Just looking for an interpreter, praise God, hallelujah. But it was just marvelous. The people were so glorious. And we had a lady from Nice, France, but she could laugh. I mean, she was so loud, she just laughed, but it, it just brought joy into the whole place. It was such a blessing. She carries her own tea with her. I mean, she came to the breakfast day and she got her own tea. Want some? I said, no, thank you. I mean, she just goes all over just doing these different meetings and things of that nature. We had a glorious time. And I had a good friend of mine, uh, uh, you know, there. I met several people that I've known over the years that a pastor, the, the head of Rhema Church uh, uh, Europe was there and different things of that nature. And, of course, they want us to come back. I said, well, we'll see. You know, it just takes time to do it because I'm loaded to the gills. I'm trying to put some, um, some spaces in my schedule where I can be home a little bit more, you know, if I can, because we're always doing stuff at the airport or here and so much television and things that are going on. And when we go on these kind of trips, we have to really put everything in the can. And, you know, to try to, get, to keep ahead and things of that nature. And then, I, man, I was trying to find a television station that spoke English. Ron, I must have said your wife's name a thousand times. I should have Pia here, for God's sake, so I can understand what's going on. How would you like to look, look, at, look at a menu and you got to pray in tongues? You got to believe. You, you, 
you don't know what it is. You know, you're just looking. And uh, we found an app on the phone. Uh, I think it was Peter's one showed it, that you got an app that you put the, uh, the phone over that, the language you don't know, and it changes it to English or whatever one you want. But I had a hard time reading that too. I said, oh my God, you know, I'm not too uh, savvy on the, on the computer stuff. I just know how to buy them. That's all I do, you know. But God was so good. People were ministered to in touch, especially ministers. And on the last night, I said, I went right down the middle of the, I call it a big convention center there. And I said, give me your hand. I want everybody to lock up. And I'm going to pray for the anointing of increase. And the lady, I'm holding her hand. She's holding all the way down the aisle. All of a sudden, she started going out in the Holy Ghost. And I'm holding her up, man. And I said, geez, I'm going to need the healing on this arm if you don't push this woman up a little bit, you know. I mean, God was moving. It was just such a blessing of the Lord. So give God a great God bless you for all the people that were touched and ministered to and saved. It's just, I can't go anywhere. Somebody don't show up that I, I, I know. And on Sunday morning, I'm in Zurich, and when they received the offering, there was a check in there from Jupiter, Florida, which is close to Okeechobee, some people. I mean, I thought, my God, man. I get, then I, I realized they, I guess, get on the mailing list. They know where we are, and they just fly there. And uh, the place was just beautiful and glorious. And, and we had a, I mean, it was cold. And uh, I, we sent a couple of um, pictures back, actually a video, but then coming back, <laughs> I didn't have my Falcon 7X because I'm doing some, some new things on it that I want done. But we stopped in Gander, and that's in Canada. And I'm talking freezing cold. I'm talking wind blowing, snow, ice, zero degrees. <laughs> and I look out there, and, it's, and I'm going to say the snow, uh, but as high as the top of those um, columns right there, up there. You know, but they, they pushed on the side. Of course, they were, where we were standing was not... You know, they had to clear all that off so the planes don't slip off. And I said, Kathy, come on, take a picture of me out there. You crazy. I ain't going out there, you know. Y'all need to pray for my wife. She needs to learn to submit. But she wouldn't. I ain't going out there. Now, but Eli works for me. Now. <laughs> and there's Eli. He like, <laughs> I said, Eli, I want to run out there and <laughs> take a picture by that big old glob of snow. He said, you're in your shorts. I said, I don't care, Eli. Here's Eli. Oh, yeah. Okay. I said, <laughs> Hang on now. <laughs> Calm down. He said, come on, boss. And he, he took the picture. Boom. We ran back to the, uh, uh, it, I was in shorts, you know. And, and I had just a wonderful time. You know, my legs has antifreeze in them. I don't get cold unless my chest gets cold. And once my chest is cold, I'm cold to the bone, like they say, you know. But my legs, you know, because I used to run all over in Montana. And it'd be zero degrees. And I'd sweat and ice would form on my cheek, you know, from running and jogging. But, but I was covered. Really strong with a couple of jackets here, but in bare skin, you know. And then uh, and it's a good way to get a tan because it turns instant red, you know, from that cold freezing. <laughs> and then it goes brown pretty good. <laughs> it just works out and all that kind of stuff. Hallelujah. In fact, one guy was running with a brother and he thought I was a brother. Because my legs was just as dark as his. I had been out there running four or five days. He said, Man, you're not cold? I said, Not my legs. They got antifreeze in there. <laughs> I said, But boy, but I said, but man, my chest, I got to keep that, you know, warm. We had a, just a glorious time. Of course, I love nature. I'm like Jesus Christ. You know, he notices a lot of different things, you know, and, uh, and it's all over the scripture. We had a marvelous time. So if you ever want to go on holiday, they call it holiday. We call it vacation. That is one beautiful place to go to. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's majestic. The Swiss Alps and uh, all over, all over. It's not a very big, big co country. And one part speaks German. You can bring P and Ron with you if you like to go. Then, you know, because she can translate all that, uh, all that, that. And then you, one place is French. Yeah, and then uh, German. I mean, all kinds of languages and stuff like that. And it's just such a blessing of the Lord. So, and Kathy, I, I put her in the line. She wasn't supposed to preach. I, she said, well, they didn't ask me. I said, I'm asking you. I said, I want you to do some day services with me. She did. And, and then we did an answer, a uh, question and answer thing. And it was in English, and I was so glad of that, you know what I'm saying? Because you got to say something, then wait for the translation. And sometimes I think they say more than what I said. Because <laughs> you know, I mean, they got to get the thought out first, you know, the way they do it, the way other languages are. But we had a glorious time. One of the questions was, that, Brother Jesse, what would you tell a young minister of the gospel just starting out? What would you say to him today? I said, don't sin. That's all I said. I said, you're waiting for anything else? Because if you do that, bless God, you, you don't do those things, you'll be a blessed man. It was such a blessing of the Lord, and God was so good. If you've got your Bibles, it's time to receive the morning tithe and offerings. I'd like you to go with me first to the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, and we're going to receive today. I get so excited when I have an opportunity to give. 
because there's never been a harvest that was smaller than the seed I sowed. You see, uh, they say my harvest is always bigger than the seed, and you can give a huge seed, and yet your harvest will be way beyond that. It's truly amazing how God does those things, and it's such a blessing. I was in a speaker room, and Kathy just renovated all that stuff, and, and Richie did such a marvelous job. They got a few more little things to do and, and everything, but it's just gorgeous. And uh, Christine said, you need anything there, boss? I said, about six and a half million dollars. She said, if I had it, I'd give it to you. I said, I know you would, and, you know, because we've taught people here how to give, and I don't ask you for nothing personally. Enough. It's not the issue. I don't do that. I just want the gospel preached to the world. But I love this scripture in Proverbs chapter 3. And um, this is for the first time uh, Richie lowered this pulpit. It's, it's a little short for me. Don't I look tall? <laughs> yeah, at least I think I do. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruits of all thine increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy precious presses shall burst out with new wine. Giving is actually an act of honor. When you give to God and you honor him, it's amazing because he doesn't need it for anything. That, well, so this is God, you know, El Shaddai, you understand what I'm saying? But when he sees that you take the substance that you worked hard for, and, and you say, God, I want to give to you because I want to honor you. It's truly amazing. i never forget one time the Lord told me to give someone. I had a beautiful rifle Kathy had given me. And, uh, I mean, it was a, a 270 Weatherby Laser Mark V. If you're a hunter, you know what I'm talking about. It was cut. But that, that thing was just gorgeous. And I just loved it. And one day I was at my home, and the, and the Spirit of the Lord said, give this to this man. And I went, No. I mean, I don't mind obeying you, God, but God, Kathy gave me that as a gift. And, uh, you know, and, and she, he said, she won't mind. I said, okay. And I thought, but my God, the man can buy Weatherby. He can buy the company. You know, but the Lord said, I, I, so. Now, are you going to do it? You're not going to do it. I said, I'm going to do it. So I went up to him, and then we were talking and everything like that. And I said, could you mind cleaning my rifle for me? I'm not that good at that kind of stuff. No, man, take that thing out of that case. That case is going, you know, and I had shot it a couple of times and things of that nature. To make a long story short, you know, he immediately began to clean it and all that kind of stuff. I could see how he's petting it, you know. He said, my, he said, just that's the, one of the prettiest rifles I've seen in my life. I said, you like it? He said, I mean, I love it. I said, it's yours. He said, what? That's a very expensive rifle. I, I, he, I said, it's yours. No, 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 you can't do that. I said, I can do anything I won't do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I said, the Lord wants you to have it. And he started crying. And you know, I'm not a man that cries, but I'm getting better at it. I'm starting to get mellow a little bit. I mean, I'm kind of enjoying that. Kathy finally says, finally, oh, hardhead, it's starting to get soft-minded, you know, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. And he started crying because it was the first gift he had ever received in his life. Now, he was a very wealthy man. The first gift. I couldn't get over that. You would think somebody would have gave him a gift, huh? But it always like, but he's got money, you know, and he, he don't need nothing. It had nothing to do with need. It has to do with love. Amen. And I gave it. It just shook him to, I mean, to the core. And that's what God wanted, God wanted to let him know that. And he honored me many times. He said, Jesse, you can have it back. I said, oh, no, no, I, I, that's, that, that's yours forever. And it's just such a blessing. It was an act of honor. I honored him. Now, you know, people don't believe too much in tithing. I do because it's not about money. It's about obedience. It truly is. It's, it's, such, it's so simple to me. You know, I, answer, I can answer, the, uh, you know, the question of Malachi 3.8. Will a man rob God? Oh, yeah, yeah, he robbed God in a second. You know, and he said, well, I'm, I'm giving my tithe. That's not your tithing. That would belong to you. It always belonged to God. The Bible says tithe and offerings over and above giving and things of that nature. People have asked me why I'm a blessed man. Because that's what I, I do. The, I do his word. I have to watch what I say because I get it. And it's truly a blessing of the Lord. In fact, some kids came up to me. Listen to this. In Switzerland, children, I'm talking, I don't know, six, seven, eight years old. 
And they gave me the little, they write things, brother Jesse, they just love me. I mean, you, I mean make, you make an old man feel pretty good, you know what I'm saying? Compared to them, I'm, I'm going on 75 years old. These kids are seven, eight, nine. They didn't want to even go to children's church, you know, when I was at Zoe Church. And they just loved me. Like, and um, one of them, I don't know if it was her mother, gave me an envelope. I didn't even look in the envelope. In fact, I never opened it. I just, you know, I'm, I'm reading all the little inscriptions. I'm about ready to go home. And Kathy said, have you opened up that envelope? And I said, no. And uh, and it was a thousand Swiss francs in there, which is more than a thousand dollars. I think the Swiss franc is a little bit higher right now. On the dollar, I couldn't get over that. I thought, my God, this came from kids. You don't think they're going to get blessed? And I, I guess one of the kids' mother, and I love what it said on there. And it said, "I believe in a hundredfold too." Boy, and that just blessed me to no end. It was just such a blessing of the Lord and things of that nature. And, I, you know, I just began to bless people and, you know, just do whatever. I gave a tip and the, the pastor was watching. I didn't know they don't tip much in Europe. You know, they don't, they don't do any of that. But this man here, me and Kathy asked for the same kind of drink. He said, oh, romantic. I said, no, thirsty. It ain't got nothing to do with romance. It just got to do with thirsty. But, you know, you know it's Switzerland. <laughs> and, and he, uh, was he Italian? I think he was Italiano. That kind of stuff. He was a great, great guy. So uh, the pastor was with us. Please let me buy this. Oh, no, no, you, I said, please, you have to. There's no other choice. I said, I won't take no for an answer. So, man, we uh, didn't know what we were ordering, had no idea, you know, because it's all in different languages and things of that nature. Uh, anyway, so we had to really, really was a nice meal. And I'm a real soup person, you know, and they had a soup that it didn't, it didn't sound too good. And the pastor said, I'm telling you, this is good soup. I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. And boy, that was the best thing on the menu as far as I was concerned. And uh, anyway, the, I think the bill was $230 or francs or whatever it is, you know. So I paid it, you know, gave him that. And I gave him $200 francs, 200 francs, which is, he, he went, what? What? I said, that's for you. What? That's for you. He, he didn't quite understand. So the pastor said it to him in German. Home. Oh, you. But he, it came out in English. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> and the pastor said, I th I th he, said you, uh, he said, you gave almost as much as the whole bill. I said, I just wanted to bless him. Tell him I wanted to bless him. And you know, when I went out, it, it wasn't Italian Russia. He kissed my hand. I felt like the Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> I, he, he didn't know what to do. And I thought, hmm, given impressed him. Can I impress God the same way? If I do with an act of honor. And the man was a great waiter. You could tell that. I mean, he, he was moving on that thing, you know, and stuff like that. So as you give your morning tithe and offering, think of it not only as an offering, but an act of honor. And honor is a gift that a person gives to themselves. If you ever get honored, it's because you where you gave a gift to yourself called honor, and people honored you for what you did. It's just such a blessing of the Lord. Now, I also believe in the hundredfold. The Bible says tithe and offerings over and above. And it's just such a blessing of the Lord to do that. You see that, and you'll get to a point where you'll be able to do it all the time if you're not doing it now, over and above and beyond, and it, 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 you will not run out. No matter what the world's doing, no matter what the, anybody's saying and going on, and, you know, see, because most people think this is about money. To us, me and Kathy, Covenant Church, as well as JDM, it's about reaching people, changing lives one soul at a time. I flew over there, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't charge them people anything. Now, they received an offer. I have no idea what it is because it's in a different language. You know, they're going to send it and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, but uh, I had no idea. But I spent about $75,000 between fuel, MSP costs, hotels, food. And you know what God did for us? I never asked. I never said, Lord. The Bible said, before you ask, I'll answer. We had a partner just out the blue, and, uh, and, and Pia called me in because she was in finance. A check for $100,000. Use it like you want. Well, my God, I put it toward that trip to get people saved so that person would get souls added to his crown. You see, and the different things of that. Nature. So before we went, it was paid for. I said, well, Lord, all we needed was about 75. He said, well, I'm more than enough. That's why I gave you 100. See, now that's not my money. I'm talking about this went to the ministry. You understand what I'm saying? Such a blessing of the Lord. And uh, to me, that's why I do what I do. 
And I don't care what something called. God tell me to go, I'm going. Just that simple. And those pastors over there, they could not get over that. Yeah. You know, one man said, I've been wanting you to come, but I can't afford you. And I looked at him and I said, he said, he said how, how, how much do you charge? And I said, well, ask me first and I'll tell you. He said, well, would you come? I said, sure, I'll come. Uh, uh, how much you charge? I said, nothing. I had to pick him up off the floor. He liked it. What? I said, nothing. Yeah, but don't you fly a jet? Yeah. Well, I don't fly it. I send it. My pilots fly the thing. You know, those kind of stuff. I said, but I don't fly it. But they get us there. I said, it's such a blessing. And he just could not get over that. Then the pilot's trying to get me to go different. I found out some of these guys. The pilot said, ask Brother Jesse to go over here. Because these guys, these boys are not suffering for Jesus. I just want y'all to know that. I go there, man. I said, all of a sudden, I can't find him. They went to a different country. While I was in Switzerland, Ken and Eli, went, uh, Diane, went to Italy. And, and what's the other one you went to? Lit? Germany. Germany too? And, and what's that other town, that other country you went to? Austria. Austria. <laughs> Did y'all use my money to get there? <laughs> no, you know, I mean, they come back and they all, oh, so I thought he was tired. I know they've been traveling. I mean, they just go, man. I mean, they just enjoy it. So I walked into the meeting and there's Eli like this. I thought he was sleeping. So I kind of bumped him. He went, I was praying, Brother Jesse. I said, sure. No, no. <laughs> no, but he was praying. It was just such a, I mean, this was a Holy Ghost meeting. It, it was really wonderful to see how God uh, did such marvelous thing. And we had the, uh, uh, David Ellis, who was on the, uh, on the keyboards, who had came. And what was that wonderful lady I met? Cindy Black from Atlanta, huh? That girl, she sings prophetic. It was just wonderful. I mean, it was just such a blessing. And, uh, and, but I thought, God. And people say, he is not worried about nothing. It was already paid for. And now their seed that they're giving, 100% of it is going into world evangelism. Now, I don't take, I don't take the, uh, the, the, uh, in, you know, the uh, expenses out, but I'm just thinking. And when, they've, when I tell them that, they just could not. They can't get over that. I said, well, I thought y'all were faith people. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. They said, you took us to a level we've never been. I said, well, I've been on a gondola. I ain't never been on. Since you took me that high, I'm going to trick you up high. You know what I'm saying? And boy, I mean, I preached some stuff, man. It was just such a blessing of the Lord. So are you ready to honor the Lord with your substance? Hold your hand up if you're ready. Now, the amount is up to you. What I love about tithing you know why I know it's not about money? Because he's never changed the rate. Been like that for thousands of years. But if you notice, the mortgage companies, they change the rate. Right? The charge company, the charge company, they change the rate. Why? Because it's all about money. The banks, they change the rates. Not God. He don't do that. He's not trying to get something from you. He's trying to get something to you. I know I'm taking a little time, Kathy. I apologize. But I felt a little Lord to speak that, see? He said, honor. So it's such an honor for me to do whatever God tells me to do. I had one man say, well, God told you to give all your money away. I said, he told, I said I've done it twice. I asked the Lord if you ever let, I said, God, will you ever ask me to do that again? I wasn't worried about it. He said, no. I said, why not? He said, you passed the money test. Because you just, you won't blink. And I'm not bragging to myself, no, I won't. Well, would you give your house away? I don't want to give my house away, but I ain't going to hell over a house. I'm just going to obey him. Now, that may not sound crazy. That may, that may sound crazy to you, but you look at it, one blessed puppy. Excuse me, one blessed big dog. <laughs> oh, let me get bigger. One blessed big horse. <laughs> Praise God. You know? I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just the truth. It's just the blessing of the Lord. I'm not just saying that. And when you give to church or you give to JDM. That doesn't come to me at all. Am I right? I, I, I don't, uh, now, if you want to give me something personal, and some people have, don't something, that's another thing. Because I, I actually, I have to do that by law. It's called designated funds. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of time I said, no, I'm doing fine. Everything's great. And they couldn't believe it that I would pay for the meals. It's just amazing. I, I got to tell you one more thing, and then we're going to receive the offering. Eli was sitting next to me. We had, went to another place. Just, 
you know, and so we were about ready to go up the mountain, took us a nice rest. We're sitting there. And they know I like Italian food, and I was raised with, with uh, you know, Sicilians. I was raised in an Italian neighborhood, you know, even though I'm French, you know. I think I'm French. I, I may be anything. I don't know, you know. My family marry anybody they could get their hands on. You understand what I'm saying? That kind of stuff. So we're sitting there eating, having a nice time, and um, all of a sudden, a whole bunch of look like Italian guys walked in. They're all sitting there talking. Looked exactly like the Godfather. Well, I never noticed him, but Eli did. He said, uh, <laughs> Jesse, I said, what? He said, look, your friends are here. <laughs> or something. He said something like that. He said, I think that's the mob. <laughs> I said, I wanted to tell you, go ask him. He lied. <laughs> he said, well, I ain't going over there. <laughs> you know? And when I walked out, they were all looking at me like And I know, is this. I don't doubt they've seen me. I don't know if they know me or not, but, you know, people think I've seen that man. Because yeah, I've been on television. I'm all over Italy and all, all those kind of things and different places, you know. But it was such a blessing. But we do that because of wonderful partners and friends like you who are watching all over the world that bless this ministry with your faithful financial support. And 100% of it going in the world evangelism. For as long as I'm head of this ministry, it's going to be like that till Jesus comes or I go by the way of the grave. That's just the way it is. We don't touch God's glory. We don't touch his money in any way, shape, or form. So I'm going to ask you to do your best. And I'm going to tell you what I told those people in Italy. Excuse me. In, um, well, I've been so many different places. In Zurich, Switzerland, and also up the mountain. You give me $1,000, today is Sunday. I'll have 1,000 new people into the kingdom by Friday. I know how to do it, baby. I don't mean that prayer. I'll get them people into the kingdom of God, and it will work. So get your offering ready. If you're, if you're writing a check out, you can make it out to Covenant Church. You can look on the screen. There's ways to give. JDM website, jdm.org. Hit the donate button. You can use PayPal. You can text to give a one-time donation or a recurring one if you want. Or you can use the mobile apps. That's the one Kathy likes. She likes the mobile apps because you choose the things that you want. Whatever you want to do, or you can just put in an old-fashioned check. So ushers, if you'll get ready to receive. And then we're going to have a wonderful song. Am I correct, Annette? All right, praise the Lord. What a blessing of the Lord. And it's such a blessing. Thank you for giving. Thank you. Do you sense that anointing here? How many of you want to be just debt-free? How about, you know what? Come on, shake on that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. How about have so much that you don't know how much you got? Uh, I'm going to tell you something you ain't going to believe. Listen to this, Gary. You, who's new? Other name was Carl. No, no, I didn't give all that. I don't know how much money I make. God is my witness. I'm not lying. I, she's my finance director. I don't know how. I have no idea. They just tell me. Am I correct? I, don't, I have no idea. But I know I do real good. How would you like to be like that? I don't even consider when God tells me to do something. The only time I consider finance is when I'm buying Kathy something. Not because I'm trying to get her cheap. I just, I don't care how much it is if she wants it. I remember when we first started out, we didn't have nothing. In fact, we used her money to get to Dallas. <laughs> it was, you know. I mean, we had nothing. I said, but you follow me. Mark my words. I'm going to do this. And it's just such a blessing of the Lord. And Kathy's mother, she went to see her yesterday. And Irene said, you have such a wonderful life. That's what her mother told Kathy. That's because of me. It's all about me. <laughs> Kathy said, it's not all about you. I said, it's all about me. <laughs> you know, that's a joke people laugh, which is just a joke, praise the Lord. But that was so nice that her mother, who's 92, and then we met another lady that was 91 there, and you should have seen her. She come up that mountain like nothing, man, 91 years old. I'll make her nothing, take care of us. That's the cost of the I want the hundredfold for you. How many of you want the hundredfold? Oh, Jesus. Hundredfold. Let people experience what I've experienced so many times. Over and above and beyond. God, I can't thank you enough for my wonderful partners. I can't thank you enough for the wonderful people here at Covenant Church that do so much. And those that feel they're part of Covenant Church online and those that are watching all over the world. We're honorable people, Jesus, and you know that. That's why you bless us. But I want every one of them listening to the sound of my voice to be blessed. I decree it and declare it today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Ushers, go ahead and receive the morning tithe and offerings, and I believe Renee and them are going to sing a song.
to you? Yes. Has he given you more than enough? Yes. <laughs> what a blessing. Please grab your uh, Bibles, have a seat. We're going to open the word today. Thank you, Renee and the team. God is so good. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesse, for stepping in. And isn't it great to have the founder in the house? Yes. God is good. We did have a great trip. Uh, and uh, he had a sweatshirt on and uh, running shorts on. Just want to clarify that. <laughs> but we had a good time uh, meeting so many wonderful people uh, there in Switzerland. God knit our hearts with them. And it's, it's just a taste of what heaven's going to be like when we get together with people from all over the world, amen, that know Jesus from the beginning of time. Till the rapture, hallelujah. Uh, let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your word today as we study. Lord, I thank you and trust you to open our eyes to see and our, help our understanding, Lord, uh, to understand what you're saying to us today. Lord, I thank you that your presence is already in this house, touching and strengthening your people. Lord, we thank you that more strength always comes when we get into your word. But Lord, we were created by your word and we are sustained by your word. And your word makes a way where there is no way. And Lord, when we understand who we are in you and what belongs to us, there's nothing that's ever impossible to us as a, as a believer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. How many Bibles I have in the house? Can I just see a show? I'd love to see your Bibles. You know, uh, we're going to continue. This is the Romans message series. It's a conclusion this is part 23, and the title is The Triumph of Christ. On the Sunday before Jesus was crucified, he rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey's colt. And the New Testament tells us that people took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. And they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. That word Hosanna is Hebrew for save us. It is the cry of, of deliverance. And it was, a bold, it was a bold declaration that Jesus was the Messiah. And that event is known as, as Jesus' triumphal entry. It's one of the few incidences in Jesus' life that is reported in all four of the Gospels. Uh, and Jesus entered into the city on the day when the lambs were being presented for the Passover celebration. And in God's perfect timing, at the precise moment ordained from eternity, Jesus presented himself as our Passover lamb. And he came to the earth to restore all that was lost by Adam's betrayal and disobedience. And his resurrection from the dead was the fulfillment of God's plan to restore the world, to the world what all had happened because of sin. And all uh, women, men, children who repent and believe in Jesus as their personal Savior are made righteous before God. They share in the triumph of Christ over sin and death. They are no longer bound to sin and its effects. So this triumph of Christ must be taught, but it also must be caught. See, Jesus taught powerful truths to those that followed him, but the Bible records 15 different times that he said, he that hath ears, let him hear. So scripture records Jesus saying this statement 15 times, seven on earth and eight times in heaven. He was basically saying, catch this. Listen and pay attention to what I'm saying to you. And there's also another way to say it. It's important that you hear and understand what I'm saying. We probably would say it this way. We've heard it said, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> it's a fun way that we hear it. But this good news about the triumph of Christ must be taught, but it also must be caught. That's how I started off this series way back in June of last year. Let's turn to Romans chapter 1. The Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the Romans to introduce himself to a church that he had never visited. And it contains a full and orderly statement of the basic truths of the gospel that he taught everywhere that he went. And on June, on the last Sunday in June of 2023, I began a verse-by-verse -verse message series in this book of Romans. 
Uh, the last time I spoke on Romans was in, the, in, the, in February, and I had George step in and do part of it, and Ron has stepped in and did some of it while I was out. But today we're going to conclude the series. But before we conclude it in chapter 16, I want us to go to chapter 1 and read two verses from Paul's powerful letter that we've been studying for these past nine months. Has anybody been blessed by the study? Can I just see a show of hands that you've learned some things and, some, and grown? Praise the Lord. Well, I just want us to read verse 16 and 17 in chapter 1 of Romans because it's really the basis, I think, for per, and the purpose that he wrote this. He says, uh, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For herein, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Point number one of my message this morning is the triumph of Christ made it possible for everyone to experience the power of God unto salvation and be taught how to live a life of faith. Amen? You see, Jesus is more than a messenger of the gospel. He is the gospel. And belief in his life, his teaching, and atoning death is the power of God unto salvation and a call to faith in him. And the gospel is both a historical event and a personal relationship. See, the Apostle Paul had a burning passion for the cause of Christ, and he considered himself a debtor to those that had not heard the gospel. Amen? Amen. And he was not ashamed to speak up about the gospel of Christ. In fact, no matter where he went, he went right in the middle of town. If it was Athens, he was right in the center of people. He didn't go hide and do it in a corner. He went right where the people were, and he went boldly with the message because he was just as bold to go and persecute the church. So there was a passion in him that he could not contain, and that's what we need to be like. We need to recognize that God has deposited the supernatural power of the Word of God in our heart, and it can't stay dormant. It has to come out. Amen. Give the Lord a shout in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. More than any other individual, the Apostle Paul was responsible for the spread of Christianity throughout the Roman Empire. He made three missionary journeys through much of the Mediterranean world, tirelessly preaching the gospel that he had once sought to destroy. That's why we, we following Paul's example, where Jesse and I have been going to the nations, since 1976, we've been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's primarily been in the front. I've been behind the scenes for a long time. I've stepped in it, into the uh, scenes here. And lately, I've been more in the front. But he has been the one that has blazed the trail for this ministry. And it's not just us. We have a team of people behind us and a team of partners all over the world that are helping us do that very thing. Paul had partners. Paul had a team of people that he traveled with. And so everybody here in this church is part of what we're doing to bring the gospel all over the world. Give yourself a, a hand clap. Why not? Hallelujah. See, when Paul wrote this letter to the believers in Rome, he had already been preaching for about 20 years and had established many churches. So Paul knew firsthand that the gospel had the power to save everyone that put their faith in Jesus. It saved him. He wasn't even looking for God, but God found him. Hallelujah. All of us have people maybe in our family don't even realize that they're looking for God. They're looking for him in all the wrong places. And they've been maybe deceived by the devil, but because of your prayers, they're going to meet Jesus. And there we're going to take them to heaven with us. Amen. We're not going to give up on our family. We're not going to give up on our loved ones. We're going to believe for them to know Jesus the way we do. But we got to be proclaiming it. We have to be sharing it. We have to be letting his light shine through us. Amen. See, Paul knew firsthand about this power, and he, and he just went for it, no matter what happened. He had been imprisoned in Philippi. He was chased out of Thessalonica, and he was smuggled out of Berea. He was laughed at in Athens, and he was regarded as a fool in Corinth, and he was stoned in Galatia. So he had experienced a lot of things, but it didn't stop him. It didn't slow him down. He kept going, amen? amen. So sometimes we don't always, our messages that we, are, that we share are, are not always received the way we would like, but we keep going. Amen. We keep proclaiming. Amen? Amen? 
Even though uh, we, we know when the sower went out to sow, the Bible talks about only 25% of it went on good ground. Sometimes 75% of what you say is not going to be received, but just look for that 25% and expect that hundredfold return, that return of somebody's going into somebody's heart and it being received and it producing life. Give God a shout in the room. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Romans chapter 16. This is the conclusion. Like I said, you know, we're going to be praying about what's the next series that I start. Um, still praying about that. Next Sunday, I'm so excited. It will be Easter Sunday, and Jesse will be in the pulpit sharing a message for us. But right now, we're going to conclude this. Even though it's Palm Sunday, it is a message of triumph. And the, the, in this scripture, this passage that we're going to read today, you're going to see the triumph of Christ. But you're also going to see some other things. In the King James Version, Paul mentions Phoebe in the first and last sentence of this letter. The Amplified Bible identifies her as a deaconess in the church and recommends her to the believers in Rome. And the Passion Translation calls her a shining minister in the church. So God uses women, has used women, and will use women to proclaim his gospel. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. See, Paul had such a great respect for Phoebe that he entrusted this godly woman with what is considered the greatest theological document ever written. And I pray that you've grown spiritually through our daily our study of this letter that she carried over to almost 2,000 years ago. We're going to read Romans chapter 16, beginning in verse 1 all the way down to 16, and then we'll talk about it, study it out. Are you all there yet? Romans chapter 16, verse 1. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church which is at Caesarea, that you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that she, you assist her in whatsoever business she had need of you. For she hath been a succorer, which means a helper, of many and of, of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epinetus, who is the firstfruits of Achaia unto Christ. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andraconus, and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Greet Ampelias, my beloved in the Lord, salute, salute Urbane. I'm sure I'm pronouncing these names wrong, but y'all just bear with me. My helper in Christ, and Stachius, my beloved. If you can do better, come on up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Salute Apelles, approved in Christ. Salute them which are of Aristobulus' household. Salute Herodon, my kinsman. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. Salute Triumphtha and Triophosa, who labor in the Lord. Salute beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord and his mother and mine. Salute Ancrocatus, Flynlunchun, <laughs> Hermodus, Patrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with them. Salute Philosachus and Julia. I got that one. Julia's good name. <laughs> Nurus and his sister Olympus, Olympus, and all the saints which are with them. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. If I would be writing a church, a letter to the church at Deshrahan, I would be saying, salute Betty Garrison, a precious soul in the Lord, a, a precious helper in the gospel. Salute Ron and P of Fortune, elders in our church. Uh, salute Richard and R Christine Bartley, elders in our church. Salute Debbie Rubes, elder in our church. Her husband, uh, Daryl in heaven, still part of this church. Salute uh, Linda and, uh, and, Ron, and 
Linda and Glenn Rhodes, elders in the church. Uh, I don't know if they're here today, but Luisa and Pat Alvarez, elders in the church, and other leaders that are here in, in the house. Our children's pastor sitting in here recovering. She's doing so well. Uh, Melissa, wonderful uh, children's pastor here in the church, caring for your children. She, uh, it's from time to time, she steps in and lets the leaders take care of things so she can be in the house, of the, in the sanctuary as well, and that's a good thing, amen? Uh, salute Saudi uh, in the house, Saudi... Uh, Wise, our youth pastor, our connect pastor was on the bass guitar, as many of you know, is Joy Sneed here in the house and his lovely wife, Tannis, worked together to do that. And I'm, of course, I don't want to forget Renee Miller, and I hope I haven't forgotten anyone else. Renee Miller, our worship pastor. Let's, and that salute was like a, 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 let's give them all a hand clapper. All they do to help. Not counting that, but all the directors and leaders here in the ministry, those who work behind the scenes serving in the whole ministry, we, we honor them. Oh, and Jesse Duplantis. Yes. Salute. Hallelujah. We are so, so thankful. Point number two, the triumph of Christ unites hearts of believers and establishes godly relationships that should be recognized respected and honored. Amen. I think that's the point is on the screen. I'm going to read it again. The triumph of Christ unites hearts of believers and establishes godly relationships that should be recognized, respected, and honored. In this final chapter of Paul's letter to the church at Rome, he commends and greets 37 Roman Christians, and about 10 of these were women. And this list is mostly of unknown people, and, and it's the most extensive and intimate expression of Paul's love and affection for other believers and co-workers. And it, it's, it's greater than, this is the greatest list found anywhere in the, his letters. But it also shows us a glimpse into the lives of ordinary first century Christians and gives us an inside look at the nature and character of this early church. It took a, a lot of people to get these things done, amen, and people stepped up to the plate. They said, Lord, here I am, use me. So Paul says, salute them. And in verse 16, he encouraged the believers to salute one another with a holy kiss. And a salute meant to show honor, respect, or recognition to a person. And what makes a kiss holy is that it comes from the love of God. And kissing of friends on the forehead or cheek or beard was common in the Old Testament. And the Jews in the New Testament church carried on this practice because of the spiritual kinship it signified. We don't really do that today. From time to time, I've seen it happen. Jesse and I were on a cruise with John and, and Diana Hagee, and they had the, we had our, our, a lot of our partners there, their partners, some of their staff. Some of our staff were there. We filled up the whole ship with just believers and I remember after one of the services, uh, Jesse and I will never forget how John Hagee grabbed Jesse by the shoulders and, and kissed him on the cheek with a holy kiss. Jesse had a little trouble with that. He's <laughs> a guy who doesn't hardly say I love you without a force uh, command, has a little difficulty with the kiss, but he had to get over it. Amen. But it's, it was meant in such love and such kindness. It was really a precious moment. By, from such a dear friend. And it was because it's especially precious to new believers but that, of that day because they were often outcasts in that society. So to have a really a genuine brother come up to you and hug you with, with the way we do it here, we give a, sometimes a hug with just a handshake. Sometimes it's a kiss on the cheek. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a tradition here in South Louisiana, actually, in Louis New Orleans area. A lot of that, that happens here. We have a lot of that tradition. In France, they do it on both sides. So with the French people that we met in Switzerland were uh, giving us a, ki a holy kiss on each side of the cheek. But it was a precious, precious uh, recognition and honor of the relationship. And so that's a beautiful thing, and that Paul took the time at the end of this letter to write all of this down, shows us as example how we should value one another and, try, and, and show the love of God to one another. Amen? So because he took the time to, to write this down, we took the time to read them, even though we didn't understand how to pro properly, probably pronounce their name, but I'm glad we did. Amen? 
And in the next four verses, Paul gives final instructions to the believers in Rome. We're going to read Romans uh, 16, verse 7, all the way down, 17, all the way down to 20 now. So y'all follow along with me in your Bible. They'll put it on the screens as well. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they, they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Hallelujah. Verse 19, for your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Point number three, the triumph of Christ over death, hell, and the grave is a continual demonstration of our victory over Satan and all of his works. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what the triumph of Christ is all about. And this Greek word translated bruise in verse 20 means to trample upon, break in pieces, shatter, grind down, and smash. And it points to present victories over the powers of darkness, as well as the ultimate destruction of Satan's kingdom at the second coming of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We are in a battle, and, but Christ is our victor, amen? amen? And he has called us to enforce his victory in the earth. He has already empowered us with all the power necessary to, to express and demonstrate the defeat of Satan already that's happened because of the cross, amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We've been empowered. Anybody feel that strength this morning? We just need to draw upon. Let's read verse, uh, the first part of 20, verse 20 again. It says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. This word shortly didn't mean soon, but it meant swiftly. And in the circumstances of life and as at the end of this age, we may expect God's conquests of Satan's working to be short and sharp. He's got a plan to put that rat in the lake of fire, amen? And like Jesse often says, we want to slap him before he goes in there for all the wicked things that he's done in the earth. Hallelujah. Um, let's look at Genesis chapter 3. You see in the midst, this is a curse passage. You probably will remember this is after Adam and Eve had disobeyed God. And then, but in, right in the middle of this curse passage... There's a prophetic message of hope to mankind. And I want you all to see this because this is what Paul was referring to in verse 20 when he wrote to encourage the believers at Rome. He was proclaiming the ultimate triumph of Christ and his church over all evil. Hallelujah. Let's read Genesis chapter 3, just verse 15. It says, And I will put enmity, that means hostility, between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Point number four, the triumph of Christ makes every believer a participant in the bruising of Satan. You are a part of this. Hallelujah. The triumph of Christ makes every believer a participant in the bruising of Satan. You see, the hostility which began in the garden between thy seed and her seed is what the Bible was talking about. And the woman, woman's seed is called, called he is Christ, who will one day defeat the serpent. And in John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus called unbelievers the devil's children. So this was a reference to Satan and his seed. And Satan could only bruise Christ's heel, which meant cause him to suffer, However, Christ will bruise Satan's head, which means destroy him with a fatal blow. Amen. See, Christ's death and resurrection was a demonstration of Satan's final defeat and our victory. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as believers, we must realize that our victory is a continuation of Christ's triumph. See, Jesus made us victorious over sin and conquerors over every evil work of the devil. I love that. See, Paul taught us to recognize 
the deceptive tactics of the devil that are still at work in the earth. He said to mark those that he uses to cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrines of Christ. See, that the, the phrase, they are slaves to, of their bellies, meant that they are driven by their desires to pull others into their group, thus, and then divide the church. So we need to be wise as serpents. Jesus taught it this way, wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Amen? Because the devil does send tares to grow along with the wheat. So we need to be sharp about and know what we believe in the Word of God. That's why it's so important that we've been studying verse by verse and seeing so many powerful things that Paul taught that we can learn from and grow from. We don't have to be babies. We can grow up and become mature believers in Jesus Christ. That when the devil launches a weapon against us, we know how to defeat it with the Word of God. Amen. We can be strong and mighty. We don't have to be lazy and weak. We can be strong, lean, mean, fighting machines. Hallelujah for Jesus. Hallelujah. God is raising up a church. In fact, he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, a glorious church, a triumphant church, and we're going to be part of that. I'm believing that this current church, covenant church, is going to have a substantial place in heaven where the believer, where we get together and say, high-fiving each other. Remember what happened when we were right there in Destrahan? Yeah, the devil threw his shot tried to get us off of the word, tried to get us to give up, but we stood firm. We believed him for our victory, believed him for our families to be born, born again, believed us for prosperity so that we can finance the kingdom, so we can put seed into the ground and see our harvest come in, because that's the promise of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Let's continue reading through the end of the chapter, uh, beginning in verse 21. Some more names to read. <laughs> And his brother's name was, oh, I'm in, I'm in chapter, uh, I'm still in Genesis. Turn back to, to Romans chapter 16, beginning in verse 21. Are you all there yet? Tim, Timotheus, my fellow work fellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and Sosipater, my kinsmen, salute you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Gaius, mine host, and of the whole church, saluteth you. Erastus, and the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you. Quart and Quartus, a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And now unto him that is of power to, to, to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known unto all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise be glory through Christ Jesus forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What a powerful ending to a beautiful book in the Bible. Point number five, my last point this morning. The triumph of Christ divinely equips every believer to strengthen other believers through unity, service, and love. Amen. Hallelujah. The triumph of Christ divinely equips every believer to, in, to strengthen other believers through unity, service, and love. Paul's last words was a prayer to commit the dear brothers and sisters at Rome to the care of God. He knew that God alone had the power to establish them according to the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. You know it had to be hard for him because he had such a compassion and such a passion for the gospel to not be able to be with them, to teach them. In fact, uh, in the first verse, first chapter, we talked about how he longed to be with them that he might impart to them uh, some things that God had called him to impart. So he did it with a letter. And we're receiving from that today because they were, it was a, words that were anointed by the Holy Spirit. So the gospel is what he was saying. He says that he was so, he wanted them to know that God had the power. The gospel has the power to keep you. You know, when I was born again, I wasn't in a church. I was had never read the Bible and I listened to Billy Graham on TV, but the Holy Spirit was my teacher. And you know, when people get born again, some of them come to the Lord through our broadcast, different ways. We don't ever actually see them or hear from them. Some of them write a letter in, some of them don't. Most of them probably don't. 
but we know that there's such an impact because later on we'll get some comments from people. But it, it, it's, it's amazing to see that the same thing with me. The Holy Spirit, when he births you, is able to keep you. And I can't keep you if you won't let the Lord keep you. So we're all responsible to God, ultimately. Although it's wonderful when we can come together and have a beautiful church like this where we have brethren that will come alongside of us and have speak life words of encouragement to us. That's why a church is so important. I didn't have that luxury when I first got born again because I was traveling all over with my husband when he was in the nightclubs. But the moment that he got born again, we started working towards getting into a, 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 he got out of the rock music and we became a part of a local church. And we were faithful to that local church. And those people there embraced us even though we were really kind of weird compared to all of them. They were pretty straight laced. We looked kind of wild and crazy. They had a, a Christmas party when we came in, and they said, why don't you come with us, come to our Christmas party now that you're coming to the church? And so they said, wear your best. And so Jesse and I thought, well, okay, we'll wear our best. And we showed up, and he has a, had a, this tuxedo on with a big bow tie, real wide uh, lapels. With a, I think it was bright yellow, bright yellow double knit, bell bottoms and platform shoes, and I had a velveteen low-cut pantsuit that I wore, and I thought we thought we looked good, and these people probably got the shock of their life. But, you know, it took a little time to clean that fish, and they were patient with us. And I look back, and I wonder how, I was wondering what the pastor may have told them what, to not say anything to this couple, because you could run off some fish, you know that? You can run off some little young sheep if you treat them ugly. But instead, love on people, Realize everybody's on their own journey. They're, they're walking by faith. They're learning some things. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's important to realize that God has positioned us here to be his arms extended, to, to be his, uh, express his love to the people that come through these doors. Instead of having a judgmental look, embrace them the way God would. We're just glad they're here. Amen. Amen. You, don't, you know, when somebody shows up at the hospital and they've just been in a terrible wreck, Maybe their eyes are gashed out. Maybe there's bones sticking out of their legs. They don't say, oh, we're not going to receive them. They, they don't look good. No, your hospital is there to fix them up. Amen. Well, that's what a church is here for, to help people get fixed up, to learn what the Word says, amen, so they can get their life straight and so they can change. That's what the gospel does. The gospel is so beautiful. That's why Paul said, I commit you to, the, to God and to my gospel. Glory to God. The gospel is the joyous good news of salvation in Jesus Christ to everyone that believes in him. The Greek word that's translated gospel means a reward for bringing good news or simply good news. So we talk about the gospel, but we have to remember that when we say the word gospel, we're talking about good news. This is good news that you can use. Amen? And so it should be good. When you hear about good news, you should have a smile on your face. When you talk about good news, you should have a beautiful smile on your face. And it should communicate that I have something you, I want to share with you that you will never forget. This is good stuff. The God of heaven loves you. He came down to earth and died a cruel death on the cross and rose from the dead so that you can have eternal life in heaven with him and all of his family. That it's a beautiful place. He's, Jesus left the earth and he's been preparing that beautiful place for you since he left. Just think about how gorgeous it is. He's got a special place just for you. And it belongs to everybody, whosoever, that will believe in him, repent and believe in him, and you would have that special place right at, by his side. Amen. The gospel is not a new plan of salvation. It is the fulfillment of God's eternal plan of salvation, which was conceived before time. It was established in Abraham's seed. God found a man named Abraham who would believe him. And through him and through faith, the faith that he demonstrated, which he learned from God himself, a God who calls those things that be not as though they were. This man named Abraham's seed is where the lineage of Jesus came from. And we are part of that seed that bruised Satan's head, that knocked him out, that's going to kick him out of earth once and for all when Jesus returns at that second coming. Amen? Amen. 
And this is the, this, all of this was completed in Jesus Christ, and it's made known now by the living church. We have an assignment to continue the message that Jesus proclaimed when he was on the earth. And this is the, the assignment that God gives to each one of us that the precious gospel that has been entrusted to us be shared, be lived out, be, uh, and bring honor to him. This is the triumph of Christ. Amen? Amen? Everybody bow your heads. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, I thank you for your, that we've been able to study this beautiful book, the book of Romans, Lord, to learn what you wanted us to know here in the house. Lord, I thank you that there's nothing that's impossible with you. Lord, I thank you that when we give our lives to you, we have a brand new slate. No matter what we've done in the past, we have, a, we have the, the promise and the hope that we will have an eternal home with you. Lord, if there's anybody here in this house today that doesn't know you, Lord, I pray that they would pray their prayer of salvation, that they would repent of their sins, and they would turn to you, that they would trust you with their life today. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're not turning people away. You're welcoming people in. Lord, that today you are, you are our Savior. But, Lord, there will be a day that you'll be the judge. Lord, we thank you that today we can receive you as Savior and Lord of our life. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, maybe you've never prayed the prayer of salvation, you can pray that with me today. Maybe you have prayed that prayer, but you've walked away from God. Maybe you know that you haven't been living for him the way that you should. You know, we're coming up on Easter season. This is Palm Sunday in recognition of what Jesus did for us, the price that he paid. And it's so important that we realize that, realize that we have a price, a part to play in all of this. You know, the Bible tells us that we have to recognize our need for a Savior. We, we can't live life on our own. We can't even live for him on our own. We need the Holy Spirit to help us to live an overcoming life. We have to recognize this. And then when we recognize it, we realize we must repent of our sins. Maybe we've been following and doing it our own way, going in our own direction, making our own choices, and not looking to him to make the choices in life that we need to make. So when we realize that, we recognize that, and we repent, the next thing is that we receive. We receive forgiveness from him. We receive his love. We receive his, his instructions. We receive his, 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 the joy that comes from knowing him. That's available for everybody today. If you would like me to pray with you, would you all raise your hand? Maybe if you don't know Jesus and you'd, or you'd like to rededicate your life to him this morning, would you raise your hands? Or in fact, just come forward. So everybody stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet. If you'd like me to pray with you, please come forward. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on up here, sir. I believe there are people that are watching online as well that are rededicating their lives to the Lord. You know Jesus is your Savior. You ever prayed that prayer? You want to rededicate your life? Praise the Lord. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward and just dedicate, rededicate your life to Jesus right now? Come on up and join this gentleman right now. Father, we thank you, Lord. And there are people that are watching online as well. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for every person. I'll just stretch your hand. In. Come on, sister. She's dead, rededicating her life to the Lord. This is. We need to be serious about God and His plan for our life. You know, when we when we come to Him honestly. He, he clears the slate. He gave, gives us a new opportunity to walk with him and hear his voice. Lift your hands to heaven right now. Let's pray this together as a congregation. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I repent of my sins. I ask you to come into my life and change me. Lord, reveal your plan for my life and equip me with all that's necessary to fulfill your plan. Lord, I ask you to forgive me in the name of Jesus and write my name in the life, Lamb's Book of Life. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord of my life. I pray this to the Father in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a shout. Let me lay hands on you now as you pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in his life. Freedom today. There's a new freedom today in your life. Hallelujah, Lord, I thank you that you're changing the old ways into the new. Lord, you're making all things new for him in Jesus' name. Bless you. Praise you. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nothing's impossible in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, your blessing. Touch her today, Lord.
fill her, Lord, to overflowing with your presence. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 He loves you so much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a shout in the house. God is so good. Amen. If you prayed that prayer online, just know, send a comment. Let us know that God has touched you. I believe that God has touched your life as well. I want to read the, the, let the states that are watching today. We have 34 states and 19 countries. Uh, the states are Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. Give the Lord a shout for that. Thank y'all for watching. Hallelujah. And the countries that have been joining us just this morning, of course, a lot of it will be watched after the service. This is just during the live broadcast. Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Colombia, Croatia, Czech Republic, Ghana, Guatemala, India, Israel, Kenya, Mexico, Navajo, Navajo Nation, Nigeria, Pakistan, Panama, Qatar, South Africa, and Switzerland. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Lord, lift your hands to heaven right now. Let me pray a blessing on you. Father, I thank you for every person that's been here today. Touch them, Lord, and strengthen them. Lord, equip them to do what you called them to do. Lord, whatever it is that's concerning them, Lord, we pray for them to be blessed in everything they set their hand to do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.